fish report. Hanging out the fish report. Hanging out the fish report. Hanging out the fish report. For your latest news in high school sports, tune in to the fish report. Don't need no bed, don't need no pool. When you tune in to the fish report. Hanging out the fish report. Hanging out the fish report. You got Craig and TK. Coming to you live from Studio F in Rushi, Ohio, it's the Fish Report Live Show with your hosts, Craig Fissinger and Ken Francis. Welcome everyone to another Fish Report Live. I'm Craig Fissinger. That's Ken Francis. We're your host. Back in the sound room are TK and Heavy D. Going to be joining those two guys a little bit later here in the show. And Ken, you know, we got our first real snowfall of the winter sports season. And it kind of created a little bit of havoc with the uh, basketball schedule. I know a few games like the uh, Minster Army girls game, the Anna Lehman girls game. Uh, Versailles tip game, boys game, those all got had to be rescheduled. And when you play a 22-game regular season, it, it can be tricky rescheduling those games. Sure can, Craig. You know, uh, the athletic directors in this area all do a great job. I'm sure they'll work their hardest to get those games rescheduled. When you got that 22-game schedule, Craig, it does make it a little bit tougher because there's only typically five nights out of the week that you can play. Usually you already have a couple games, and, uh, you know, you hate to schedule too many games in too few days. So uh, it does create a little havoc but I'm sure the athletic directors will get it all figured out. Yeah, one game they did get in was Monday night's Covington at Rushi girls game. Got our chance to watch a really great player for the for the Lady Bucks, and we're going to be talking to her a little bit later in the show. Yes, we will, Craig. We're looking forward to the interview with senior Covington Lady Buccaneer Jesse Crow. Jesse's a thousand point scorer over there for the Lady Buccaneers. Uh, she leads the. Uh, Buccaneers in most offensive categories and she's got the uh, Covington team playing very well this year and uh, looking forward to what she has to say about her season and her plans for the future. All right, and before we get to all that, just like we do every week, we have a weekly poll question. And speaking of 22-game regular season, tonight's poll question is about 22-game regular seasons. Yes, it is, Craig. In 2012, the OHSAA expanded the basketball regular season to 22 games. In your opinion, Listeners, is this the perfect amount of game, too many games, not enough games, or is it not enough games when you're winning or too many games when you're losing? So our listeners out there, our voters, uh, go out there. We'll watch the 12 metrics after the show and and, uh, see how they turn out. Yeah, if you're watching us on the Fish Report Live page, you can scroll down and answer our poll question and check the results out if you're watching us on NK Telco or Game Face Ohio. Ken and I will have those results for you at the end of the show. All right, Ken, let's get things started with something we like to call Five for Fighting, which basically means I have five uh, topics that we uh, I picked. Between you, I, and the Sound Room guys, we will fight for our opinions on those topics, and let's take a look and see what tonight's topics are. Looks like we got uh, public versus private, flying at Trent, Four Corners, State Pole, and Weekend Hoops, and we'll get things started with the public versus private. And Ken, uh, sports writer Tim Rogers had an interesting article on J.J. Huddle last week about the whole subject of recruiting up in Northeast Ohio. Basically, a bunch of coaches, ADs, uh, and some members of the Northeast District Athletic Board met with the Ohio High School Athletic Association uh, about this, uh, about their concerns. And it's been an age-old problem, of course. And, uh, you know, I guess what uh, was most interesting is that the 15-team Suburban League up there, which is one of the most dominant, uh, probably the most dominant league up in Northeast Ohio, has actually uh, uh, might possibly protest silently, Tim said, by not scheduling private schools in any sports regardless of gender. You know, Tim mentioned that there's actually quite a few schools that uh, kind of take part in that right now. It's kind of an unwritten rule between some schools, discouraging uh, scheduling regular season games against private schools. Uh, but he's never heard of an entire league instituting such a policy. I know this is a sticky subject with you. Do you condone those type of protests? Well, Craig, you know, I'm not sure about the protests. I definitely do not condone the recruiting. I think recruiting is is, is ruining high school basketball. Uh, I think the OHSA needs to step in and say, hey, you, rec- you uh, recruits per se, you're not allowed to play in the postseason. I don't care what you do in the regular season. If you want to play and, and play the sport you love, that's fine. But you're not going to play for that new team in the postseason. Now, as far as, uh, you know, boycotting the schedule in the regular season, you know, if I'm the public school, I say, hey, 
private school. Let's play. You know, we'll go out there, and, and if we beat you, it's just more icing on the cake for us. But uh, if we don't, you know, uh, your guy, he can't play in the postseason anyway, so we'll beat you then. So that would be my stance on it. Yeah, TK Heavy D, will you guys want to chime in on that subject? Yeah, I, I kind of uh, tend to uh, agree a little bit with Ken there on the postseason aspect. Uh, in 2012, I think that was the most recently uh, time there was any kind of a, a petition. Uh, over 100 schools, superintendents took a petition to OHSAA to separate uh, public and private schools in the postseason. So again, let those people recruit. That's fine. Separate them at the end. Let the recruiting schools go over there and play by themselves. The public schools Take what you can, build your own programs, and then see what happens. Um, it's a fair way to do it, I think. If you're allowed to have certain rules one side, not the other, let's separate the postseason. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm kind of with Ken on this one. I, I, you know, I let the schools schedule who you want. If you want to play the private schools, go ahead. If you want to, if you want to, I guess uh, boycott them or whatever, go ahead. But it doesn't really help you come tournament time. And until they make a change there, like I said, I, I'm not sure what that's going to do uh, by boycotting those those uh, private schools. All right, let's move ahead to flying at Trent. And this weekend, of course, is the 14th year of the annual basketball showcase down at Kettering's Trent Arena called Flying to the Hoop. Uh, they advertise it as 42 teams, 23 games in four days. Last year on Saturday morning, if you remember, they featured a small school Division Four matchup between our Rushi Raiders and the Tri-Village Patriots. Uh, it was great attendance. Even President Eric Horseman said that uh, he couldn't believe it. He was amazed at the turnout. But uh, nothing like that is scheduled this year. No small school matchup this year. Are you surprised? I am surprised, Craig. You know, uh, Mr. Horseman puts on a great show over there. For uh, uh, He's got one of the top high school basketball tournaments in the country. Uh, hats off to him. I think he does a great job. However, I think he's missing the boat with not having those two D4 schools uh, play first game on Saturday morning. Last year it was spectacular. You had two undefeated teams, the Rushi Raiders and the Tri-Village Patriots. They put on a great show for for everyone in attendance. There was people there from all of Shelby County and Dark County and and uh, just, uh, you know, uh, a perfect way to start the day on Saturday. You know, it would have been great to see another Shelby County League school, another MAC school, say a CCC school, uh, some Division Four schools, a lot of great basketball up here. Bring the small school in, let them perform on the big stage, and let them enjoy the atmosphere. Yeah, Trent Arena is a great venue to watch basketball, and, and when you get that small school, especially from up here in uh, uh, central Ohio, on, on the west side, you, you, you bring a bring a big fan base to the game and, uh, you know, you go to some games and you, you got the top net notch players from big schools and they just don't bring the fan base. I think, though, uh, in the end, it takes away from the, the intent of that, which is to psych people out about their ability to go on to the next level. They, they want to make this a big event where only 7% of the kids go on to the next level, but it makes for a fun weekend and a lot of, a lot of hoopla and that's what he wants, so... That's what he gets. Yeah, I know they call it a showcase, and then typically that and that means they're trying to showcase some of the better talent in, in Ohio and in the country, I guess. But, uh, you know, there is some a lot of talent. It's a showcase. Let's showcase some of the smaller schools. One game, showcase that uh, one game with the smaller schools. And, you know, we just talked about the whole recruiting thing. You know, some of these kids do actually stay at the school that they, they started at, and they don't mm -hmm. move on to the big school. And there is some talent, a lot of talent. We saw it last year in those smaller schools. And, and yeah, I wish they would have showed at least one Division four game to to the, to the basketball fans out there. All right, uh, we'll move ahead to Four Corners and uh, saw a comical tweet last weekend uh, from sports writer Colin Foster over at the Daily Standard there in Salina. He was covering the uh, St. Henry at Versailles boys game, and let's show that tweet of uh, Collins. I think we got it here. Is It, uh, it says, uh, St. Henry goes Four Corners. Versailles fan to E. Rose as he's walking to the locker room. Go back to Rushi with that stuff. Hashtag Raider Ball, hashtag love it. And, of course, uh, uh, E. Rose is St. Henry's coach, Eric Rosenbach. He's a Rushi alum. And I think, guys, every team has a four-corner offense or some type of stall ball that they use. But Rushi seems to get a bad rap for it over here. What's the deal with that? Well, Craig, uh, first of all, you know, Coach Rosenbach does a great job with the St. Henry Redskins. And, and I think uh, a lot of that speak uh, 
uh, fans speak out sometimes, and uh, just like the media do, you know, they, they say a lot of things that, uh, uh, you know, they, it's just free game out there. So, uh, you know, I'm a fan of the four corners. You know, it, it's uh, it's a tough thing to coach. I think the Rushi program's done it very well over the years. Coach Bremigen did a great job with it. And, uh, you know, yeah, sometimes it does come back to bite you. But, uh, you know, if you didn't go four corners and you ran the offense and you missed three straight shots, the fans are going to be on. Why didn't they go four corners? Yeah. So, you know, it's always second guessing going on one way or the other, Craig. And, uh, you know, that's that's coaching and that's high school sports. I, I can remember a game in, the, I think it was the late 90s, Rushi went to Minster and played over there, and I think we stalled for 95% of the game. <laughs> I, I was there. And we got beat like 12 to 10 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I was there. Yeah, well, when you're when you're successful with that uh, kind of thing, it, of course it's frustrating for uh, for the other team, and I think that's why it probably gets a bad rap. TK, you agree? Yeah, I have to agree. And and. Probably on the flip side, I bet there's a couple games where Sales has gone into a four corner and uh, and tried to slow things down every once in a while. So it just depends on the game, depends on the team. All right. Well, uh, let's uh, move ahead now, guys, to the state poll. And uh, the boys and girls state polls came out this week, of course. Uh, thoughts on uh, what the state polls mean or thoughts on who's on the state poll? Well, Craig, you know, it's a lot of fun to look at. I, I don't know that it means a whole lot. I've been following high school basketball for a long time. And, yeah, I look at the state pools every time they come out. You know, I look for teams in our region. Uh, you know, it's pretty bare this year in our region. And I think that just goes to show you uh, how balanced we are over here this year. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of teams on there, Craig, that honestly I've never heard of. I thought I've heard of almost every Division Four team in Ohio. <laughs> But uh, I got to admit, there's uh, uh, two of them on there that I don't think I've ever heard of. So, uh, but, uh, you know, I'll tell you what, I, you know, I'm probably being a little biased here, but uh, you could probably throw four of those teams in, in the Shelby County League or the MAC, and they'd be lucky to be 500 right now. You're right. You're right. Guys, what, what about you back in there in the sound room? Any thoughts on the state pool? Uh, the only surprise I had was uh, if you look at the girls. Uh, uh, D4 there. Hannibal River. Kind of surprised where they are. Um, I think their name, their coach is Coach Clarice down there at Hannibal River. Has them playing pretty well, I think. Read a few articles about them, so that's nice to see uh, new names up I'm there. assuming you're being sarcastic there. Is be. there any way you know about Hannibal River? Don't tell me you went there last weekend looking for something to do. I might be uh, a little <laughs> pulling a little wool over somebody's eyes, maybe. Probably not. I think it makes it fun. I like I like the state polls. I'm kind of with Ken on that one. I, I don't think they mean a whole lot, but it sure is fun to uh, when you get a, a matchup of top ten teams, that's for sure. All right, guys, one more topic, and that is weekend hoops and a lot of great games coming up this weekend made even better with the state polls. Any particular games that you guys are looking forward to uh, either watching or hearing about this weekend? Um, none in particular, Craig. I, I guess uh, I'll start off with with one that's going to play. I think tournament implications for the Pickle Sectional, and that's a tri, a triad at Rushi. I think that's got uh, some – both teams are coming in with very good records. I think both teams could uh, – uh, there'll be a top uh, one or two uh, seed and, and uh, maybe a three seed. But uh, I think the winner of this game is going to kind of uh, set tone for a, a little bit of the way that bracket's going to, to fan out here in the next uh, month. I'm looking forward to Sunday, 1 o'clock, uh, Coach Sherman takes his fifth-grade Lady Raiders to St. Henry. Ooh. And to play the Redskins over there, that looks to be a very good matchup. A preview of future stars, huh? Potentially, both, both, yes. Both schools. That, that ought to be a good one. Don't know if I'll make that one, but uh, TK, how about you? I'm not sure if it'll be the uh, powerhouse matchup that some of the other games are, but I'm actually looking forward to this Friday night at Sydney. The Troy Trojans are coming to town. I'm going to try and make it over there to see Coach Bremigen on a different sideline with a different team. See how he's doing with those Trojans. Uh, they've won a few games, but they unfortunately have lost more than they won. And they're going up against a tough Sydney team that's playing real well now. So kind of interested to see the Sydney team and to see Coach Bremigen on another sideline. I'll actually be heading over to that one as well. Interested to see that matchup. But I would be excited if I was a Versailles Tigers fan this weekend. They have two big games on Friday night. They travel to Fort Recovery. Top two teams in the MAC going at it over there. Uh, both of them are undefeated in league play overall. For sales, ten and two. Uh, for recovery, seven and two. And then the next night on Saturday, for sales travels to LCC, top team in Division Four right now. Last year, if you remember, LCC came to Versailles, had a twenty-game winning streak until they ran into Kyle Arns, who poured thirty-one points on them, and uh, they think that game went into overtime. Versailles pulled that one out, broke LCC's. Uh, winning streak, so I imagine they're going to be out for a little revenge. Like I said, top team in Division Four right now, 
Is that cr- the Division Four, or Division, Division three? three? LCC Division. Division Three. Division Three. That's yeah. right. I get mixed up. They seem to but, bounce back and forth. But yeah. uh, one of the better teams in the area right now. That'll be a good game right there. Actually, and, and like you said, the the Friday Saturday combination for Versailles will two two real good games there. Yeah, and I don't know if you can call this the weekend, but it is Martin Luther King weekend coming up. So of course you got flying to the hoop and Monday at 10 a.m., which is kind of an odd time for a basketball game. But the uh, Pickle Indians take on Marion Catholic of Illinois, mm-hmm. and uh, you know I, I guess we'll call that the weekend. But uh, Pick was led, of course, by Colton Bachman, who was on this show a couple uh, couple weeks ago or a couple years ago actually, and uh, actually got a chance to talk to Pickle Daily Call sports writer Rob Kaiser earlier this week, and he told me that uh, that Colton actually is on track to become maybe Pick was all-time leading scorer if he continues to to keep racking up points like he's doing this year. He's doing all of it with an ACL injury as well. So uh, uh, that's a that's a heck of a job by Colton. And Marion Catholic, that's a tradition-rich school over there. I think that's the home of actually Tyler Eulis, mm-hmm. who played yep. there, who's now a star at Kentucky. They actually have, uh, believe it or not, one of the top freshmen in the country right now. A, a, a kid by the name of Chase Adams can. So remember that name. He'll probably be playing at Kentucky in four years. He but, probably will be. But uh, anyway, I think Pickle's going to have their hands full of that one. But that would be a good matchup if you're a Pickle fan. Not only that, you get to see great talent over there at Flying to the Hoop Craig, but you can also listen to one of the greatest PA announcers in the history of the OHSA, Mr. Bachman himself. <laughs> Dwayne Bachman yeah. will be announcing that, which Calling is actually it. Colton's grandpa. Colton's grandpa. Calling it off the rim. <laughs> he is good. When we get a chance to listen to him at the uh, at the the holiday tournament, as well as I don't know if he handles the pickle sectional anymore or not, but. Uh um, I believe he does. He does a good job. So, All right, well, that's going to do it for the first half of our show. We're going to take a quick break, but uh, stay right there. When we come back, we're going to talk some girls basketball, including that interview with Jesse Crow. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to the second half of Fish Report Live. And, Ken, we've been talking some cross-county conference basketball for the last couple weeks. Last week we actually talked uh, CCC boys basketball with Tri-Village coach Josh Sagaster. Tonight we're going to talk some cross-county conference girls basketball with Covington star Jesse Crow. Ken, uh, she was last year's MVP. She's their leading scorer. We're happy to have her live on the phone right now. Jesse, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us. Jesse, do we have you? Okay. 
I don't know. I think we have a uh, connection problem there, so we'll try to get that worked out. And, Ken, in the meantime, let's check out some uh, – gr- we're talking some girls' basketball. So let's take a real quick look at the SCAL girls' basketball standings. And why don't uh, – when the guys are trying to get Jesse on the phone, why don't you update us on what SCAL girls are doing right now? Uh, Anna sits atop of the league standings, Craig. They're at 7-0. and uh, Fort Laramie just a game back at 5-1, and Craig. Those two are going to square off here in a big Shelby County League showdown here uh, in the nether week. Uh, Rushi at four and three, Jackson Center at three and three, and Houston also at three and three. So the middle of the pack of the the Shelby County League girls, they're very congested. Uh, it's pretty much a two team race, Craig, and uh, we'll see how that pans out. Yeah, Rushi actually made a jump from I think they were at fifth in the standings maybe last week, moved up to third. And uh, let's take a real cool look, quick look at the Matt girls standings while we're talking girls basketball, and uh, let's see where the Matt girls are at right now. Well, Craig Minster having a great, very good year. Craig, they're at top of the league standings at 5-0. and Fort Recovery right behind him at 4-0. Uh, New Bremen uh, having a nice year at 3-1, and as is New Knoxville. So uh, kind of uh, things are wide open there yet uh, in the Mac girls' standings, but uh, some big games coming up down the road. Yeah, we talked about the Rushi Raiders moving up on the standings. The Versailles girls have actually made a, a jump there as well. I know a couple weeks ago we were talking Matt girls and Versailles down there hanging around the bottom of the standings, kind of unusual, seem to be working their way up in the standings. Yes, they are playing very well right now. All right, and uh, speaking of uh, uh, ba- girls basketball, we're, uh, we're we're trying to get Jesse Crow on the phone, and, and we want to talk some CCC basketball. Uh, they're, uh, Covington's playing very well right now. They're actually up there. The league leaders, I think, in that, that conference are actually Tri-Village, Covington, and uh, Miami East is playing very well. Rushi is going to be playing Miami East this Saturday. Miami East has a young star over there by the name of Morgan Haney. Looking forward to seeing her. But uh, that conference sometimes uh, gets a little looked over when, you, when you're talking SCAL Mac. But uh, it's a respectable conference that's played some very good basketball these last couple of years. Yes, it is, Craig. Uh, they're doing a great job uh, playing really good basketball. Like you said, uh, Rushi's actually had some big wins uh, uh, this year. They beat Newton, and they also beat Covington uh, the other night. So we'll see how they can handle Miami. East. I think uh, Miami East might be the one of the top teams in that league, along with uh, um, Tri Village as well. So I've seen Tri Village is ranked in the in the top of the team standings over there. But uh, uh, they're off to a good start. And we'll see what happens. All right. Well, I think we have Jesse now. Jesse, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks. For- we don't have her. All right. I guess we're working <laughs> on having some technical problems here right now. So I, th- uh, I think they got her on the phone. It just can't. They can't pipe her in. All right. Well, listen. We're uh, we talked some girls. Let's let's jump ahead and talk a little boys. Uh, I know we uh, let, we talked SCAO girls and boys. Let's talk or Mac girls and SCAO girls. Let's check on the boys. Ken, where's the SCAO boys sitting at right now? Well, Craig, the boys' standings. Uh, it's uh, you know it's it's kind of an interesting race right now. You got Jackson Center uh, and Rushi. Both sitting at uh, six and one in the league. Uh, Anna at five and two. Craig and uh, Anna's definitely right there in the thick of the league standings yet. Uh, they've uh, play have to play Jackson Center and Rushi both yet again. And uh, so, and then of course the big game between Rushi and Jackson Center still to be played yet this year. So pretty much a three team race. Craig uh, Farallon uh, is still a very dangerous team there. Craig, so they're sitting at three and four uh, in fourth place. Uh, Bakken's has had a couple big wins, and uh, you know Fort Laramie, they've got a lot of talent down over there too. A uh, dangerous team to play any time in the season. So uh, you know, there's nothing easy in the Shelby County League this year, and uh, you know I think uh, those teams sitting with one loss, uh, uh, there's there's a lot of games to be played yet, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that Fairlawn team. I mean, they, they that's a, a team that, like you said, they're sitting at three and four. Two of those losses. One of them is a double overtime loss to Rushi last Friday night. The other one is a is an overtime loss to Jackson Center. Mm-hmm. Uh, three and four doesn't they don't look like they're real dangerous, but uh, nothing can be further from the truth. Dangerous team right there, Craig. And uh, like you said, they, they took Jackson Center into overtime. They took Rushi into double overtime. So, uh, uh, you know, they're just uh, – they got a great score over there. And Nathan Lessing, uh, you know, they've just added uh, Keyshawn Johnson onto the team, a very lightning quick guard. Uh, and they've got some other really good shooters, Craig. They work hard on defense. Coach Tidwell has them playing very well. They just can't quite find that way to win the big game yet. And uh, – you know, come tournament time, Craig, they're going to be a very dangerous team. As, as, as you know, that's a team you may play in the semifinals at Piqua or the finals at Piqua. And, uh, you know, they uh, the team to keep, uh, keep your eye on. on. All right. Well, now, listen, I think we have uh, Jesse on the phone now after a little bit of work from the sound room. Go, guys, those guys, uh, they do it all they're back good. there. But, uh, Jesse, finally, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me join you guys tonight. 
All right. Well, listen, I uh, got a chance to watch you this past Monday when uh, when Covington visited Rushi. Uh, your overall record, Jesse, you had a good game. You had 10 points. You, the Lady Bucks are sitting at 10-5 and five right now. Give me your thoughts on the season. How, how, how do you think uh, your team's doing so far? Um, we started out pretty good. 10-5 and five is a pretty great work, record to start out with. We've had our ups and downs for the season, but especially us five seniors coming back and meshing with the new players, we've are making progress, working together, ready for tournament time. All right. Well, Ken and I were just talking about your conference here a little bit, and uh, two of the teams you're battling right now for a conference championship are Tri-Village and Miami East. You actually lost a close one to Tri-Village back way back at the beginning of December, uh, and then you played Miami East recently in a holiday tournament, but, of course, that, that Miami East game doesn't count for the regular season. You meet Miami East again in about a week. Now, Jesse, I understand you play some AAU ball with a couple girls from both of those schools. How does that work being teammates in the summer with them and then opponents in the winter? Um, Being teammates with them in the summer is always nice because you get out and play with new girls and stuff, meet new friends. But then when it comes to wintertime, I mean, it's helpful for your team. That way you can help the coach out and prepare yourself and know their strengths and weaknesses. But it's always nice to get to meet new people and see them every once in a while. Hi, Jesse. This is Ken Francis. Uh, you've got a lot of good teammates on your team. I look at your box scores, and a lot of times different nights, so you got different leading scores, so you're a very well-balanced attack, uh, you know, a dangerous uh, team to guard. But one of those special teammates has to be number 14, and that would be younger sister Jordan Crow. Uh, explain to us uh, the relationship on the basketball floor, and have you passed down some of your basketball knowledge uh, down to uh, your little sister? Um, it's definitely nice having a younger sister to play with because you can always talk to her, help her out, and especially when she looks up to you the most, like, I help her out as much as she needs. We go outside, play basketball whenever she needs help or I need help. We're always there for each other. Yeah, we get butt heads and stuff, but it's always nice knowing you have a little sister looking up to you all the time. Jesse, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, your next game is this Saturday against Greenville. But it won't be long, and the tournament draw will be here. Last year, you lost a very tough game in the tournament uh, to Southeastern. They hit a buzzer beater to beat you guys. Uh, is there a little bit of a, a, a redemption factor for the Lady Buccaneers? You guys had a nice team last year. You got a nice team this year. Um, you know, what's the motivation this year to, to get you guys ready for the postseason? Um, it definitely motivates me a lot because it's my senior year and stuff, and especially since I let my team down last year. I got in trouble, so I got suspended for two games, and then I couldn't play in that final game to help my team overcome that obstacle and move on. But we'll definitely look to move farther this year on the tournament. Jesse, you've had a great year at Covington High School. Uh, you know, you're a member of the 1,000-point club over there. You lead your team in a lot of offensive categories. Uh, let's talk a little bit, though, about post uh, high school plans, uh, college plans. Uh, what's the plans for the future for Jesse? Um, right now, I'm planning on attending Edison State Community College to continue my basketball career for two year, two more years at least, and enroll in the PTA program. And then after I get my PTA, uh, then I'm going to transfer somewhere to get my PT license. All right, listen, Jesse, one more question and we'll let you go. Ken mentioned a couple of those uh, achievements you've had over there at Covington, 1,000-point club, and some of the records you've broke. One of the records you broke was actually last year when you scored 40 points in a game. You broke the single-season game record held by Lynette Roth over there. Lynette, of course, was one of the great ones at Covington. She's actually a member of your Hall of Fame. Did, did you aspire to be a great basketball player when you were little, or, or where does that motivation come from? Um, I've always dreamed big, and I've wanted to play basketball my whole life. Um, my motivation comes from my father. He's always taught me everything since I was little, everything I wanted to do, and I lost him in fifth grade, so it just motivates me more to make him proud of knowing him, you know, that he's always there and still pushing me to the best that I can be today. Jesse, listen, that's great stuff. Uh, you know, we really appreciate you taking time out of uh, your evening here to be on our show with us tonight. Uh, wish you the best of luck and wish the Lady Buccaneers also the best of luck uh, the remainder of the season and down the tournament trail. So uh, from here at Fish Report, good luck to you and, and the rest of your career. Thank you. Thanks, Jesse. All right, that was Covington senior Jesse Crow. And, uh, Ken, you know, uh, we mentioned all the records she has over there. She's got conference honors, district honors. She was MVP of her team her freshman and junior year. 
And the only reason I imagine she was in her sophomore year is that that's because she lost the whole year due to an ACL injury. Mm-hmm. And I imagine she's headed down that same trail again this year. But uh, uh, very nice player, and uh, I'm sure she's going to have a bright future, whatever she decides Absolutely, to do. Absolutely, Craig. And uh, glad to hear she's continuing her basketball career for the Chargers of Edison State. And I'm sure she'll uh, do well there, not only as an athlete, but uh, they're getting a great student and a great young lady. All right, glad we got that interview in tonight. And one more thing to get to, and that is tonight's poll question. Why don't you read the poll question again, Ken, and we'll check on the uh, Fish Report telemetrics. Craig, in 2012, the OHSA approved the high school basketball teams to go to a 22-game regular season. In our listeners' opinion, is this the perfect amount of games, too many games, not enough games, or not enough games when you're winning and too many games when you're losing? (laughs) TK, Heavy D, what do we got back there? Uh, Fish Report viewers have an opinion. Uh, The Fish Report viewers tonight that voted, 75% say 22 is the perfect amount of games. And... uh 25% 25% say too many. All right. Well, listen, I, I have to agree with them. I think 22 is a good number. Uh, you know, I know there's some states that let them play 26, 28, even 30 games, I think oh, it wow. is. But, uh, you know, I think 22 is a good number, especially when you live up here in the snow belt and you get games canceled. <laughs> you got these athletic directors uh, scrambling to, to reschedule games. I think 22 is a good number. Yeah, if you make a good tournament run, you can get 30 games in anyway. There you so. go. All right, well, that's going to do it for us tonight. Do want to say special thanks to our guest, Jesse Crowell from Covington, for joining us tonight. Special thanks to the viewers out there for tuning in. Ken and I and the crew will all be back again next week. Same time, same place. Until then, have a great rest of the week, and good night, everyone. Hanging at the fish report. 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 For your latest news in high school sports to an end. Don't need no bed, don't need no pull When you tune in to the fish report Hanging at the fish report